just said that Carpenter had done nothing wrong except wanting to do God's will when he was caught in the wheels of a spinning tail about God getting his fiancée pregnant. His normal world turned upside down by what appeared as obvious deceit and betrayal of trust. How could she do this to us? Some of us will be so irritated and too infuriated to think about the well-being of a supposed traitor. But being a very kind man, Joseph was going to end that relationship nicely and move on with his life. Get your journal, let's start with question one. When it appears that those you trust have thrown you under the bus, what do you do? Always remember, your reaction is a reflection of who you are, irrespective of who they are or what they may have done or not. Our reactions to the unexpected reveal intimate pictures of who we are and where we are in life. How do you treat someone you love whom evidence is pointing to the fact that they betrayed you? Tradition would say, expose the person to be judged and condemned. Conscience would advise, rip them out of your heart and consider them dead to you. But God, what would God say? Please don't conclude on anything no matter how absurd until you find out what God is saying about it. That saved Joseph a ton, even though it wasn't the end of a saga of the virgin conception. God knew there was no way Mary was going to spin her innocence out of that outlandish tale. So he took the burden off her shoulder, stepped in as the faithful father he always is and always will be, irrespective of how our circumstances tend to paint him. He showed up uninvited again where Joseph isolated himself to brood over his strange fate and announced the call in a language Joseph will understand. I can imagine Joseph going, really? So you're telling me that of all the girls in town, you got my fiance pregnant and now I have to take responsibility for that? and raised the child as if he were mine? Like, seriously? What kind of God goes to such ridiculous lengths to do such incredible things with human beings? When life deals you those unforeseen blows that change the trajectory of your path, that is not the time to strike back or bemoan your unfortunate fate. We are called to trust the Lord with all of our hearts and to lean into him when nothing makes sense instead of running off with our own interpretation of events. In all of our ways, if we will pause enough to acknowledge the Lord, he will light up the way through the predicament. If you find yourself in a God-ordained fix like Mary, will you be patient enough to let God who started the process to communicate with those who need to know? Will you let God tell his story to those he wants to? Or will you take the story out of his mouth and tell it in a way to exonerate yourself? Will you be up in arms fighting for your right to be heard and believed? Or will you hold your peace and let God prove your innocence? Will you be obedient like Joseph when it appears that your great plans and good name have been messed up by something that is not even your fault? What will you not do to prove that you didn't do it? Will you be out raving and trying to prove you are not what they are thinking? Or will you be still so you can hear that still small voice and know what God wants you to do about it all? Can God trust you with his secret? I recall years back while on a vacation at a friend's, God specifically instructed me to wake up early, 
take a shower and get dressed to meet with him every morning. It seemed awkward because for me, vacation is time for sleep all you want and eat all you can. But immediately I started doing what God asked me to without thinking twice about it. I didn't know how to explain it to my friends, so I said nothing and nobody said anything to me, except that I overheard their criticism later. My heart burned with pain and my face with shame at their reaction. Still, I could not explain why I had to do that. Few months later, God gave me an amazing job that required me to wake up that early to get dressed and leave the house to beat the crazy traffic in my new location. It was not hard to adjust because although it started during my vacation, it had become a habit I continued after that. There are some things that are not for us to explain. And no matter how hard we try, we will never be able to exonerate ourselves. There are some stories that are not ours to tell, and there is a time for our part of the storytelling. When we understand that God is behind the scenes of events that don't make sense, then we must rely on him in the face of seeming adversities and trust that he will make a way out for us. He takes off the pressure to go blabbing to prove to others that we are not irresponsible. Can God trust you with his secret, even when it costs your reputation? Can you endure a little discomfort to protect God's story until it is ready to be told? Or will you expose it to untimely abortion just to save your fading face? Can you hold your tongue and temper and allow God to order your steps through difficult paths you can't navigate on your own? Paths that don't make sense. Will you stay committed to the cause, even if it costs your dream and name? Charged by God, Joseph had to take Mary under his wings. How many people today would swallow their pride to answer God's call and possibly live with something so absurd just because of God. How many people will not sneak up behind the back of another person who takes on a task that makes no sense in the name of God? It's easy to condemn those who refuse to believe Mary's innocence then. But are we any different? Irrespective of times and places, we all think and act alike. But God knew the man that would obey him. Thus, he chose to use Joseph. God announced the call to Joseph through an angel, knowing from his history that this man will do God's will, despite the cost to his integrity and personality. If you are still wondering how God chooses his candidates, here are some answers. God is not partial. God is not respecter of persons. He honors those who are not ashamed to answer when he calls. He sends those who are ready to go however and wherever he leads. God uses those who have learned to trust and obey in small things to accomplish the great and change history. God didn't just pick Mary and Joseph out of the blues. It was based on their quiet and private walk with him down the years. They learned to say, yes, Lord, to whatever God asked of them long before Jesus' conception was announced. If you want to do the impossible with God, learn to trust and obey him with the little things that others take for granted. If you can trust and obey God through your everyday walk with him behind the scenes, one day you will find yourself on the center stage of history. 
What are you willing to lose for God's sake? How far can you go for him? Which dreams are dearest to you? And what would you do if God calls you to surrender to his dream instead? As you pause to ponder these questions, document your reflections in your journal. It's part of our journey to discovering who we are and to becoming who we are designed to be. Check out the links and the scriptures below for additional help. Feel free to share your thoughts and answers in the comments. Be inspired. You are a star and it is your time to shine. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with family and friends. Join me in the next video still on this series of divine interruption as we explore hope is always ahead, not behind.